Hey folks, ET here coming at you with the next portion of our new crash course, which is the options ticker bit dashboard. This is where we drill down individually on different tickers to find plays. There's some information on this page that I'm going to gloss over a little bit as there's other information on our YouTube already that will explain it a little better than I can. And there's some things that we're going to cover that's going to make this video be just a little bit longer because we kind of need to take a look at indices versus regular tickers and things we should be, should and shouldn't be paying attention to. So here we are, we're jumping in. This is all very simple stuff that you can see your algo time frames, your option sweeps, your dark pools, your support, your support resistance and your Greeks. All of this is going to look better on the charts page, which we covered in an early, earlier video that I hope you have watched. So number one, Charts page is where you're going to get a lot of this information a little bit easier and going to look a little bit cleaner. Screen's going to be a little bit bigger. And so I would advise going there for that. But this is the algo flow for SPY, which is an indice. On indices, we simply ignore the algo flow. Plain and simple, okay? We ignore the algo flow on indices. Some days they match up well. Most of the days they will end up not matching up well at all. So we just ignore it for there and we use market net flow, MNF, if you will, as, the, as our broader market direction as we go along there. Our daily and weekly premium heat maps. Very simple. Bright green, right, are our buys. And our dark red are our cells or exiting of positions, okay? So plain and simple, nothing difficult to look, to look at there. I think some of these things are, are important, but they can be a little bit messy and difficult to understand, not because of the platform, but because premiums themselves, I think, are better viewed through the whale timeline, and we'll cover that down low. I, I use the whale timeline uh, on, on tickers that aren't SPY, very frequently to see what's being entered. And I think I think that's just a better, a simpler way for us to understand how things are going. Once again, we're on an indice, so our daily premiums, I'm going to put an X on, not necessarily look at. I'm definitely ignoring its net flow for sure, 100%, and its daily volume on calls and puts. And it's daily in its daily open interest on calls and puts. I'm also going to have a little bit less interest in because it's an indices. We're going to look at meta here in a few minutes. And I think we'll get a better picture there of what of what it, what it should look like on a regular one. And you do pay attention to them when you're on a regular ticker. All right. Plain and simple. This is your volume versus your OI. You can choose your calls and puts. You can choose puts only calls only. A lot to look at here. There was so much going on with indices. It could, it's just so much information to decipher. It's going to take a very big brain to look at all of this and think that's where we're going. But it's pretty, I start to think when I see these big green, these big greens, these are areas that we're just going to kind of stick around because they usually match with gamma, which we'll cover here in just a minute or so. All right, moving along our open interest by strikes. We can either see our aggregate or we can get an overall view. We can choose our expiration date to see what it looks like. So we can go, we can actually drill down to Monday and see what our open interest by by Monday looks like. You see there's a lot, a lot of calls OI at 530, a lot of put OI sitting down here at 516 with some matching calls around 515. So I like to I like to look where our bars are within a range when I'm looking at this. I'm going to be honest, you're going to see some extremes, especially when you're looking at the aggregate. Right. I like to ignore these things that are far away, that are just very, very far away. Maybe something crazy happens that causes it. And I like to look within about a ten dollar range as to where our calls and puts are fluctuating. But we're, we're going to get a better look at this, in my opinion, by looking at gamma. If you want my honest opinion, I think looking at the gamma is going to be just a little bit simpler for us as we go along. Here's one of the sections that Hater already did a very good video on. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and gloss over this and say, Watch that video instead of listening to me fumble through it because I think he did a far better job than I could at the moment, and I think that is important. All right, so we're going to skip this spot for right now, and we're going to go into our dealer Greeks, which, which are important. What we want to do, I'm going to go ahead and refresh my page here because I've been, been clicking through some buttons, having a good time today, checking different stuff. I'm going to go ahead and flip through that real quick and then bring us back, bring us back to our dealer Greeks. Plain and simple, you're going to get a better view of your dealer Greeks and your customer sentiment, if that's what you wanted to look at, on the charts page. So I recommend going there because you're going to see the bars a little bit cleaner. But plain and simple, SPY is a short or a long under when we're negative and a short over when we're positive. And you can see these big 
red bars down and price going up just kind of gradually as they went. And we didn't start to see some downside, some major downside until we started to see these. We're very even right now around here, but you click that back test, that'll give you that information that you get there. It'll show you the percent. If you click and unclick, then you can get the numbers back as you go. A lot of folks very much like to test the different things to see what we look, what Gamma and Vanna and Charm all look like as they go along. Gamma actually has a little bit better percentage of shorting under. As you can see, their bars are shrinking as well. All right, and if you go to Vanna, when Vanna is very negative, you do not do well. All right, when Vanna is negative, going long, plain and simple, or, or shorting when it's positive. It's an inverse, so... And it's, and it's not the best inverse you've ever seen. It's got a very low percent as we go along there. So Vanna's not something that I would necessarily pay attention to on that because it's got a lower lower to total total returns for us. Very simple here on Dealer Greeks, all right? I will note that some tickers are inverse. So coin is technically a sell when it's negative and a buy when it's positive. So you always want to run this back test. On every ticker you do, run this back test. Don't just blindly buy. As you're going along, you want to run that back test as you go. All right, going into our next spots here. Delta correlations, price distribution, volatility distribution. Volatility dis distribution is simple. It just basically gives you an idea of how far price may deviate from the average. So plain and simple, it's telling you, it's telling you, Upper limit is there, and your average and your average price change is around 0.73. I want to point something out here. One day always means next day with your price distribution. Do not just take everything you see as an end-all, be-all. Just because it shows a little bit bullish on Monday doesn't necessarily mean we'll see that. Everything here changes throughout the day, so it's important to keep an eye on it as it goes. So there's Monday. We switch to Tuesday. Our volatility distribution changes as well. So does our price distro. Everything kind of moves along as we go there. Very simple to look at, but please remind yourself when you're looking through these, these things do change periodically throughout the day. So you could start with a day where it says the next day is bullish, and all of a sudden some data changes all, all over the board that shows you that it might be more bearish. Van and Charm. Glossing over this one as well. I am no expert when it comes to Van and Charm. I plan on learning as I go along so I can put out a, a better video when I have a better understanding of how Van and Charm works. So my apologies there. We're putting an X there. I think Hater's done a better video on that than I ever could as well. Dealer OI, very simple for us. Red is, is bullish, okay? And green is bearish dealer OI. When we're looking at customer OI, inverse colors, okay? Green is bullish, red is bearish. So more along the lines of what you would see. I still believe if you're looking at some of this information, your best bet is still to check your dealer deltas and your customer sentiment, which we covered in the charts page. I think that's going to be a better guide for you. But I do look at this as the day goes along. And this, this also changes to see if I see it can match distro a little bit to say oh we've got we've got some we've got some dealer oi that's showing bearishness we've got gamma that's showing a pull down and we've got some price distros that are saying potential downside that's when i start to look at matching things like that plus with the customer sentiment to see if that's also going bearish you kind of start to pair things together to look for specific trades all right we're almost done with looking at looking at spy and then we'll move on to meta which will which will be we'll gloss over quite a bit of it because we've already covered it we'll just point out that it's important to watch those things on that page as opposed to ignoring them like you do some of the things on the spy page all right here's our aggregate right now what we fr frequently say in a lot of our videos is we trade green to green Right, Our green levels are our repel levels. This is a theme throughout the entire platform. Our red levels are our price attraction levels. So price attracts red, repels green. Where we are on green is important. If we're over it and we stay over it, then we have a chance to go to the next one. The most important thing on this entire page, though, in my opinion, will be our, will be our daily expiration looks, something I use every single day all of the time. So this is for Monday. Monday is saying if we can't stay above 521 or 519, we go to 515. Plain and simple, that's our biggest pull. Range all the way down to 510, a very small repel level there. But if we over, but if we open over 521, 
we do have a chance to go up to these pulls right here. I will point out this data changes all day long, a couple hours into the session, this data will look different. And then you can start planning out the rest of the day a little bit. So let's say, let's say Monday opens and 520, 521 stays a repel, but we get a big bar at 525, a big, a big red negative bar down to pull price, plain and simple, right? And we get over 521, our chances to go to 525 get higher. What you'll also see when all this is happening, if well, let's put some things together here, is a positive net flow, a bullish net flow most likely, and zero day gamma changing with big negative levels, right? We covered that in the options dashboard video a while back. The, the You will start to see big negative levels appear on your zero day gamma as well. So you start to pair these things together, your net flow, your gamma pulls, well, your gamma repels, and your zero day gamma, what do all those things say as you go along to start planning your trades. Next, and I love this portion of it. Number one, GEX expiry. I don't pay too much attention to this. This is just how much gamma is rolling off on each day. All right, OPEX days are always going to be very large, but the GEX and VEX profile, which also changes, guess what, throughout the day. So this changes as we go throughout the day, and here's a simple, simple explanation. The further below zero, here's your zero line, the blue line is the more price is supported. So look where we've been ranging around. Look where we've been ranging around and look at these prices that we're rolling through right now. Pretty easy to see. This is where price is supported. But sometimes what you'll see is, is you'll see this change big. You'll see it pull down to a level that's higher up or lower. And on those days, what you'll start to witness is your gamma, your zero day gamma starts pulling in that direction. Your net flow is pointing in that direction. So you're really starting to piece together how to day trade, how to scalp spy from looking at these things just very important to see okay largest orders this is an indices thing and i'm just going to tell you right now when you're on an indice pay less attention to this unless you are just an absolute master at reading indices flow most of us try to ignore it and use mnf instead calls and puts contracts the same thing whale timeline i discussed earlier that this is where i actually like to see what my oi looks like and who's doing what but we're going to look at that at meta on instead and our matrix, we're going to look at meta there as well. Matrix, basically, for me, I like it best when we're going to the short side and when price diverges from the yellow line. So as the yellow line starts to go down while price goes up, I like to look for shorts on just individual tickers. All right, video is getting long, and I am sorry. We're going to move along to meta really quick as we go along. So these things you do want to pay attention to on regular tickers. What puts over calls are, what's the most dominant contract, if sentiment is neutral, bearish, or bullish. All right, your OI is going to be the same as you see everywhere else except for here. It's good to pay attention to it. Good to see where you're going, but I'm still going to point out for your premiums heat, for your premiums heat maps that your whale timeline is going to be a little bit cleaner and easier for you to take a look at. Daily premiums for puts and calls, definitely want to pay attention. Pretty muted day here. Puts and calls both went down a little bit. Net flow, you can check its history. You can see what it looks like over longer periods of time, shorter periods of time. So you can see it's been climbing up a little bit. Meta has been going up as we go as well. So interesting to see that there's been a net short on Meta for quite a while, but it's actually been seeing a nice rise. So you can go as far out as 10 days there to see what it looks like on the 10 day Pretty interesting. You can see calls have been curling to try to catch up there. Open interest, daily volume and open interest, very important. More important here, definitely, in my opinion, than it is on SPY. This is just your volume of calls versus puts and your interest in your calls versus puts helps you to help helps you determine bearish or bullish a little bit easier. Okay, volume and OI heat maps, no difference here. Right, so right now, right now we're on on volume. If we want to go to OI, we can see where the biggest portions of OI are sitting. All right, and we can check our metrics as well. We can see if we want to see calls only and see the volume on calls. Lots of volume up high. If we want to see both calls and puts to see where they are, right? There's a little bit of volume here as well on our on our on our put side, but we're seeing some good push to the upside right now. All right, same as spy. Right here, OI by expiration date. Do not look at the extremes. We're not going to $9.50 or $5 any, anytime soon. Instead, look within the price range we're currently in to get a better idea of where we would go. You can see there's a lot, a lot of calls, 
a lot of call, a lot more calls than puts if you're really looking at it as we go along. Not that big of a deal. We're going to use the whale timeline anyways as we go along. We know we know I'm not making a video on that right now. We've already color, covered its dealer Greeks. It is it is a very big win when it is short. When when you buy when it's negative and when it starts to go positive, you also win well as that goes along. Price distro we've already covered. Volatility distribution as well. Dealer and customer OI work the same here as they do the indices, right? Gamma works the same as well. Green attracts, red repels. Quick hint, if you're trying to use gamma on individual tickers and not indices, please make sure they match up with support resistance or dark pool levels. That is where you're going to see the best action for price when it comes to those things. Gex and Vex works the same. So does Gex by expiry. Our largest orders are still very important, right? Once again, though, we're about to get to that whale timeline down here, and this is what I love. Okay, so your whale timeline, you can add or remove things as you go along. This is going to show you what is actually being bought a ton. So right now you see people exiting 510. When you start to see these bars go down, you start to witness a little bit, a little bit less of strength okay and same when when you see the matrix see how the matrix is was slowly starting to dip there price is going up if this yellow line starts to retreat then we know it's a decent short back to the whale timeline what we see here somebody was in some five some 515s let's see here the, what the, the green one is the 550 let's remove a couple to see so somebody was pretty long for this 550 but they exited which means that their, their long side is a little bit less interesting to them at that strike. But look here, 530. Keep an eye on this every day. If it continues to climb up and continues to climb up, then they are entering that position for 530. This is why I love the whale timeline. Keep an eye on what the whales are doing. Draw out your levels with dark pools, support resistance, and gamma on the charts page. And then keep an eye on when it's time to enter for your longs or shorts. Very, very simple. All right. Hopefully this video was not too long and arduous for all of you. Just wanted to give an explanation as to the difference between regular tickers and the indices, what you should and should be watching and just should and shouldn't be watching and go from there. Everybody have a good day and stay safe out there.